up guys, my name is Austin and in this video I have compiled what I believe to be the most essential products to bring with you while attending a camping music festival. In the description of this video I've listed all the items that I'll talk about today in the video and even some extra items that you can buy off of Amazon. Those are actually affiliate links in the description so if you were to make a purchase using one of those links I would actually get a tiny percentage of that sale. So if you're looking for a way to support the channel or show your support for KC Festival fam, I would truly appreciate it if you guys would consider making purchases through those links. The first thing you're going to want to figure out before you start packing or planning for your music festival is if they allow for car side camping. Car side camping is essentially exactly what it sounds like. It just means that they allow you to camp directly next to your car. Um, the alternative to that would be tent only camping, which means once you get parked, you would gather up all your belongings and you would get them to a different spot on the property and then you would set up camp there far away from your car. Um, obviously there's advantages and disadvantages to both, but more than that, it can drastically affect what you do and don't want to bring. You're obviously going to want to try to pack less if you're in tent only camping and you're not able to camp next to your car. Uh, when you're packing, if you have tent only camping, just try to keep in mind, I got to lug this all the way to a campsite and all the way back. Do I really, really need it? Uh, I personally prefer car side camping. Uh, there's obviously the big advantage of not having to lug your stuff all the way to the campsite and then all the way back once you're exhausted at the end of the weekend. But I also like it because it adds security to your campsite. You're able to lock up all your valuables in your car when you go inside the music festival and at nighttime. I also like it because it, it's a power source. You can plug in your phone. You got to be careful so your car doesn't die, but it can work to charge phones. Um, it's a good way to escape from the heat during the dead heat in the afternoon. If you want to take a nap, you can go in there and turn on the air conditioner for maybe a half an hour, an hour, and cool off. If you're driving to a music festival, I like to make sure I get an oil change before I leave. Make sure I check my tire pressure. Make sure I have my spare in my trunk. I always will check my lights, my brake lights. Make sure my license isn't suspended. Um, the actual title, I mean. Um, make sure you're, you have valid insurance. Just check all the marks off so you won't get in any trouble on the way there or on the way back. That will ruin your good festival weekend. Another tip for arriving safely is I always see people with window pane on their car because they're so excited to get to the festival. They say uh, headed to Electric Forest or Bonnaroo Bound. Um, in my eyes, if I was a cop and I saw that, that would definitely entice me to pull those people over and maybe even search their car. So I just don't think it's worth it to put window paint on your car. I think it's a red flag for cops to pull you over, in my opinion. is jumper cables. Cars are constantly dying at music festivals. Um, what I have been using the past two years is this portable power bank that will actually it's strong enough to charge your car battery. Um, I bought it on Amazon. It was like 40 or 50 bucks, I believe. Um, I'll have the link in the description if you guys want to buy one for yourself, but it works super good. That way you don't have to ask your neighbor for a jump. You can just pull this thing out, hook it up to the battery, and jump yourself, and your car can get back running again. For packing while planning for a music festival, as I like to make a list of everything I'm going to need and everything I'm going to want in the festival, and then as I pack it into my car, I check it off the list, and as I pack the next item, I'll check it off the list. And then once I go all the way down, I get everything checked off, I know I'm good to go. And then that way I don't miss any items and I know I won't forget anything. Last pre-arrival tip I'll give you guys is definitely show up with a full tank of gas. Um, you're going to be running your car throughout the weekend. And you all right, so the next few things on the packing list all are related to your campsite or to your actual tent. Uh, I figured the best way to go about it is I'll actually set up a tent and kind of a makeshift campsite to show you guys what it would look like and then also I can go through and just point out each aspect that I think is important or vital to bring and make sure that you don't forget. Alright, let's do it. So the first thing for your campsite is a rain tarp. Uh, you just want to lay it down and be a base layer underneath your tent in case it rains. It'll help keep your tent dry. Also, a lot of times there's really long grass where you're camping at music festivals and that gets condensation overnight and then that can even seep through your tent and get it wet if you don't have a tarp. Is a tent. Uh, it's kind of a three-part item because you have your actual tent, then you have the rain fly to go with it, then you have stakes to stake it all down, and one thing that people are commonly forget that you wouldn't think they would forget is their tent poles. Uh, because tents are so packed in their bags a lot of times, there's not enough room for the poles, 
and so people will set them aside and then next festival they'll forget that they didn't put them in the bag and then they'll show up to the festival with no poles which means no tent and then you're kind of shit out of luck at that point. All right, so next on the list is an air mattress and an air mattress pump. Uh, I just have this crappy manual air, air mattress pump, but they definitely have ones that are battery powered, which make it really easy. Or I've also seen ones that you can plug into a cigarette outlet in your car, and that works as well. This is more of like a festival hack for you, but if you don't have an air mattress, something I've done in the past when I was really poor is bought one of these, uh, you know, like floaties for the pool. And it, it works as a good air mattress. It's not great, but it's definitely better than sleeping on the ground or just in a sleeping bag. All right, so next on the list is a sleeping bag. Uh, I always bring one even if I have an air mattress just because of the warmth factor. I like to lay it as a base layer over the air mattress, kind of as like a comforter. Shit, I just broke my sleeping bag. No, no. And so next on the list is just a pillow and a blanket. I like to bring this old comforter because it's pretty warm. And then I always bring a throw pillow. That way I don't have to bring my actual pillow in case it gets wet or nasty or gross. Uh, Alright, so next on the list is a chair. Preferably a folding chair, not one of these crappy plastic ones. But it's all I got at the moment. Uh, you definitely want to bring as many foldable chairs as you can. You can get them at Walmart for like nine bucks and they, you're always short on them. People are always having to sit on the floor. Another thing you're going to want for your tent is a flashlight or a lantern of some sort. Um, it gets super dark at music festivals. There's not a lot of lighting at night. So it's hard to see, especially in your tent or at your campsite. So just, I have this high powered um, flashlight that has a clip on here and it also has a string that I can attach to it. And I like to hang it just from the top of my tent. That way anytime I need a light, I can just flip it on and flip it back off. Next on the list is a cooler for your food and for your drinks. Um, honestly, if you're attending a three or a four day music festival, I'd almost recommend that every single person that goes brings their own cooler. It makes it a little bit easier just for organization's sake, so you know who's is who. But also there's just, coolers fill up extremely fast and there's never enough room. So if you want to make sure you have enough room to keep everything cold all weekend, I would just bring your own cooler, maybe this size or a little bit bigger. So bonus cooler tip is one thing I would say is the ice is super expensive at most music festivals that gouge you on it. So I always, before I go, I go to a gas station, I fill up my cooler all the way to the top with ice. That way it'll last as long as possible. Um, another thing you can do, I've seen people do, is put dry ice on the bottom of their cooler. You can get a big cooler for a group. Put, put dry ice in the bottom, put cardboard over the top, and I know some people that swear by that method. All right, so next thing on the list would be rain boots or rain gear of some sort. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a music festival where it's raining, but it can sometimes be miserable, especially if you're not prepared. So one thing is waterproof shoes of some sort, because if it does rain even one day, it's gonna be super, super muddy throughout the festival grounds, and you're gonna want something where you're not gonna want a cloth shoe to be walking around in. So it'll be an easy up canopy. Uh, if you go to a music festival, you see them everywhere, pretty much at least one per campsite. Some campsites have tons of them, uh, mostly just because they work great for shade and it gets super hot during the afternoons at music festivals, so it's just a good place to hang out under and get some shade. The tapestries, we love bringing tapestries. Once you set up the easy up canopy, we kind of like to make walls around the easy up. So you get a little bit of privacy from your neighbors. It also will help stop the winds from blowing in as much. Um, and it just looks cool. You have a lot of cool tapestries hanging around your campsite. It's cool decoration. The next on the list would be like a folding table, a white folding table. Um, you can just set it up underneath the easy up. It works great to play beer pong on or drinking games if you want to, but also just for general storage. Of the next on the list would be a lock for your tent. Uh, you always hear about theft throughout the campsite, so this is one way to help prevent that. Uh, I like to get the one that has the padlock on there versus the one that has the keys because you can obviously lose the keys and it's a little bit harder to actually forget the combination. Next on the list for your campsite is a hammock. Obviously you gotta have the adjustable straps to go with it, but you can hang it up in between any two trees really. And you can have it to hang out during the day, just lounge around in it or sometimes at night I'll sleep in my hammock if my tent gets wet or like my air mattress is deflated or whatever the situation is. Uh, it's also great if you want to pack it up during the day and bring it with you. It's pretty 
It's pretty compact, can hang on your belt or whatnot. Okay, zip ties, bungee cord, duct tape, pretty much anything that can help fix or mend brakes in a tent or a tarp or an easy up or to hang up tapestries. All right, so next on the list is stakes. Obviously you have the stakes that come with your tent, but I always like to buy a few extra ones, stronger ones that are gonna be more sturdy. You can never have enough stakes at a music festival. Honestly, you wanna make sure everything is super secure. If you don't believe me, I'll cut to a video of people that didn't secure their stuff down good enough. Here you go. Boom. <laughs> so the last thing on the list for the campsite is something that I just recently bought and it's come in pretty good handy throughout the last few music festivals is a solar shower. I'll cut to a picture of it so you know what it looks like. Essentially it's just a big pouch that you can fill up with water, leave out in the sun to get warm, and then you can hang it up from either an easy up or you can just put it on top of your car, just put it somewhere high and then you use the hose to shower yourself off like a normal shower. They work pretty well, it's not the same as actually showering, but it's a good alternative for a $10 a day shower that you would pay at the music festival. So the next section I wanted to talk about is the food. Uh, some people only like to eat at the vendors and they just don't want to hassle with bringing their own food. Some people only will eat at the campsite because they don't want to spend the money for the vendors. So I'll give you some ideas on both and then you can kind of decide what you want to do from there. If you're planning on doing most of your, your eating at the campsite, I would definitely recommend investing in one of these butane burners. Mine's pretty old and gross at this point, but I have a link in the description. They're only about $19.99 on Amazon. Uh, you just put the butane cartridge right in here and it just shoots up a flame and it works great. And I'll only recommend checking the FAQ of the music festival to make sure that the burners are allowed. Um, I have snuck them into a couple festivals that say they aren't allowed with no problem just because they're so compact. But yeah, I would definitely check the FAQ to make sure you don't get it taken away or anything crazy like that. All right, so I'm just gonna go rapid fire through some items that you might need if you're planning on cooking at your campsite at a music festival. So a pot and or a pan, a spatula, tongs, cooking spray. You definitely wanna have cooking spray so your stuff doesn't stick as much. Trash bags, so I know they'll give you trash bags on the way in, but you're gonna want extra. There's always way too much trash after three or four days. Clean up after yourselves. It'll make us look good as the EDM community, also just respectful to the venue. So yeah, definitely clean up after yourself. Bring Next is red solo cups. If you wanna play beer pong, you're planning on mixing drinks, you're definitely gonna want that. Uh, tin foil, you're gonna want that. Paper, uh, paper plates, paper napkins, uh, disposable silverware. Uh, you might want a can opener. So a few easy to cook items that I've done in the past that are great are like hot ham and cheeses, grilled cheeses, you can just heat up some um, Chef Boyardee mini raviolis, you can make pasta with Alfredo sauce, pasta with spaghetti sauce, uh, we do, we've done hot dogs before, obviously PB&Js, just normal deli sandwiches, macaroni is always good, any canned soup is good, in the morning we'll do bacon or sausage, eggs, that's all pretty good, instant coffee is great. The next few things I have are just like non-cook items that, but are good things to eat at music festivals that you don't have to prepare in any way. They're just, you know, snacks. Granola bars, beef jerky, mini donuts for the morning, Lunchables, trail mix, pistachios, uh, pretty much anything with high protein content that you'd be able to eat that's easy on your stomach. Bananas are good, oranges, clementines. If you're planning on only eating at the vendors, I would definitely recommend bringing some um, just snacks or no cook items like I just mentioned with you because sometimes the vendors are closed or they're a far walk and you're not gonna wanna walk that far but you still need something to eat. Uh, also, if you only plan on eating at the vendors, be sure to bring lots of cash. Most vendors will accept debit cards but not all of them and uh, you just don't wanna hit those, you don't wanna have to pay those ATM fees. If you only plan on eating at the vendors, I highly recommend you getting some spicy pie. I've survived many of music festivals only on spicy pie. So the next group of items is gonna be all about self-care. The first thing on the list is Dr. Scholl's foot insoles, shoe insoles. Um, people don't realize, but taking care of your feet has a dramatic effect on your energy level throughout the weekend at music festivals. So I definitely recommend having either extremely comfortable shoes or some sort of insoles for your shoes to make sure that your feet don't get worn out or blisters by the end of the weekend.
Next we have bug spray, sunscreen, gold bond. You definitely don't want to chafe at a music festival with all that walking. It's terrible. I've been there. You don't want to do it. Um, dry shampoo, body wash or soap. Bring a towel in case you shower. Ibuprofen, melatonin, um, NyQuil in case you get sick, cough drops. These things are pretty basic, but sunglasses, gum, chapstick, uh, lighter or a lighter leash so you don't lose your lighter. Um, those are all things that are essentials when you're attending a music festival, whether it's camping or not. Last thing on the list is a supplement I've started taking recently at music festivals called 5-HTP. Essentially, it's a serotonin booster. It just helps boost your serotonin levels after a long night of raving or partying. Um, it's really been effective for me to help post-festival depression. Um, and next on the list is either a flag or a totem. Um, the main purpose for these items is to be able to meet up with your friends easier in the crowd, navigate through the crowd easier. Um, but it's also a great way to express yourself or represent your crew or represent your hometown. Um, there's so many people doing so many creative things with totems nowadays. It's almost like an art form. Next is either a fanny pack or a money belt. These things work great for not losing your stuff, but also for anti-theft. It's pretty hard to steal out of them because it's so close to your body. Next thing we have is a portable speaker. I like to bring a big portable speaker for the campsite, and then I have a little portable speaker that I can toss in my backpack and have playing when we're just walking around through the campsite or on the way into the venue or in line or whatever the case may be. So next thing on the list is a camelback or a hydration pack of some sort. Um, obviously it helps you stay hydrated throughout the festival, but it's also great for storage. And honestly, I couldn't imagine going to a music festival without my camelback. Next thing on the list would be koozies for your drinks. I know that sounds pretty basic, but usually your drinks, even when they're in the cooler, are already halfway warm because there's not enough ice. So having the koozie, once you pull it out, will help maintain that coldness a little bit longer so you're not drinking lukewarm beer or lukewarm soda all weekend. Next thing on the list is a pashmina. I personally don't rock the pashmina, but a ton of my friends do, and I see how stylish and versatile they are. If you're a cigarette smoker, you definitely want to bring plenty of cigs for the whole weekend. You don't want to run out. I was at Bonnaroo two years ago, and I went to the general store because I ran out of smokes, and they were charging $26 at the official general store at Bonnaroo, and I was just blown away by that. I didn't buy it. I just decided not to. But yeah, you definitely don't want to run out because if you do, they'll gouge you on the prices. Next on the list is portable batteries. You're definitely going to want to bring as many as you can get your hands on. Um, I have five or six that I like to charge up before each festival and bring with me. And it seems like almost every festival I still run out by the end. Um, I do know a bunch of my friends that have invested in $50 or $60 portable batteries that they usually last throughout the three or four days no matter how much they charge their stuff. Um, I actually have links in the description for a couple different types of portable batteries if you guys are interested off of Amazon. Alright guys, that brings it to the end of the Camping Music Festival Essentials video. If you guys liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you press that like button down below. If you think that we forgot something or you have something to add to the list, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. We love hearing from you guys and interacting in the comment section. If you aren't subscribed to our channel yet, I would really encourage you to smash that subscribe button down below. We're bringing you tons of music festival content all in 2019 and 2020. Music festival vlogs, recap videos, packing videos, tutorials, lineup reviews, interviews of artists, podcasts with my friends, all kinds of festival related content. And it would really mean the world to me if you guys would subscribe. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,